Hi, it's Kelly here, and in this video, you're going to get a chance to actually feel a heart valve energizer, or otherwise known as a multi-wave oscillator that's spinning right through the screen. Prior to that, I'm going to talk about the, this, the ideas behind it, why it works, and what have you, and some of you may have heard this before, in which case there will be a link down below if you just want to have the experience of the heart valve energizer. Uh, you go to the link down below and click on it, and it will take you to the start of that process of experiencing the Heartfelt Energizer firsthand. And the reason it will work is just like if you're listening to music on YouTube, it's all electromagnetic fields. You'll be picking up the, the frequencies from the Heartfelt Energizer coming through the screen, picked up by the microphone, and coming up at your end through your speakers. So. And, you'll, and basically people will oftentimes feel the energy immediately within the first second or two if they are calm and focused on the process. If you're distracted by something else, then it, you know, it's a whole different ballgame. Um, so let's begin. This all starts with a, a gentleman named George Eslakowski who invented the multi-wave oscillator and he wrote this book called The Secret of Life. And he worked with Nikola Tesla uh, to develop his multi-wave oscillator. And he first started experimenting with, with plants to see if he could affect the health and life of the plants. So I want to show you some photographic evidence of that, because I want you to know this works with plants. You know, produce, whatever, you've got a garden, if you have a, a farm, whatever. This can help grow healthier plants, more of them, bigger, the whole nine yards. So I want to show you, first of all, a picture that he started with in his experiment from this book. And, uh, oh, but before I show you the picture, I just want to say, a lot of people have been telling me, are asking me, you know, I hope you have it all written down somewhere where we can, you know, go to one place and there it is. And so hopefully with this video, we'll be doing that. I'll be talking about a lot of different things. And there may be some new stuff in here, I don't know. But in any case, uh, that's why I'm making this video. And the shirt's open because I've started physical therapy and I'm still kind of warm from the, the activity. Uh, and so, let's see. Uh, the picture that, you want, that I want to show you first is the, the actual, one of the actual experiments that he did in his book. Now, I may be pointing in the wrong direction sometimes here because of the left and right fit deal, but in any case, you can see this middle plant is help has got leaves on it, and it also has a growth on it. Back in nineteen in the nineteen twenties, he referred to this growth that he added to the plant as a cancer, and he did the same thing with all these other plants. And you can see the other plants died. And this one still has the growth, but it, uh, shortly thereafter it fell off. And the difference between this plant and all the others was real simple. It has this wooden stick here in the ground. And then you might not be able to see it, but there's a copper wire, a circular wire that goes around. It's open on one end. And that's the only difference between this plant and all the others. And this plant flourished. In fact, I'll show you another picture of it. This is four years later. It's a geranium. And here it is in its full glory four years later. I don't know about the life cycle of geraniums, but that's a nice looking healthy plant. And so anyway, uh, so that was with plants. And then he started working to see if he could you know, treat humans. And sure enough, 90 years ago, he, people started getting cured of cancer. And I'm going to show you a picture of a, a young 82-year-old woman <laughs> who had a, a cancer on her face. But what I'd like you to focus on is the youthful look of her skin and how smooth it is around her jawline, on her chin, her upper lip, etc., and even on her cheek. You'll see. She had... Uh, three treatments a week for three weeks. They were 15 minutes apiece. And she had this 
big old cancer on her cheek, and then it goes away. So it's not it's black and white, so it's not too horrible. And I'm going to hold this up here, and I'm going to uh, peer around. You might see my face, but I want you to get a good look at it, and so I can see it. Yeah, you can't see me so much, but th there you see her. And again, notice her chin line, the smoothness of her cheeks and, and her face, uh, her, her jawline, I should say, and her chin, and then her upper lip, and how the one is rough and the, and the other is not. To me, you know, her skin, she looks like she could be 50 years old. You know, if we don't look at her gray hair, uh, she could pass for 50, where she was 82 years old and quite sick uh, with a, what likely was a terminal cancer. So that's pretty good. And it, so it makes you look younger. And I've, got, I've received feedback from people who have said that it makes them look younger. And, and just to give you an idea of myself, uh, here's my hands. I, I'm 73 years old. And you can see that that doesn't look like the typical 73-year-old, particularly since, uh, as I've mentioned before, I had a broken back. I have a metal rod. I do not exercise, and uh, I like to tell people I exercise minutes a year. That's the same joke I use all the time when I make the videos. <laughs> but it's basically true. And I've been not exercising particularly for the last 14 years uh, when I aggravated my back. It, the, my back was broken a while ago, but I fell and it aggravated it and things kind of went downhill and I had the surgery and all of that. But anyway, when you think about somebody who's 73, who is inactive, uh, you know, just sitting all the time, maybe in a nursing home, for example, and w what their muscle condition would be. And you would say, well, they wouldn't have any muscles. They would they, nothing. And I'm no Arnold Schwarzenegger by any means. But considering how my lifestyle has been, I should have no muscle, but I want you to see that, in fact, I do have some muscle. You see that? Not bad for 73. And I attribute it to these heartfelt energizers that have helped keep me, uh, keeping me to be a little bit younger. I have turtle, turtle, or what do you call it, turkey neck, because uh, I used to weigh well over 300 pounds, and, and this stuff has assisted me in losing about 80 pounds. So, you know, I'm still stuck with a turtleneck at this point. I'm still I'm working on it. I don't know. We'll see if, if I can get it to go away somehow. So anyway, these are just some of the benefits that it can bring to you. Uh, I had neighbors who would argue a lot. Uh, and when I would go out the door, 50% of the time I'd hear them arguing. Maybe twice a week I would hear them arguing from across the road. And when I set up a prototype of the Heartfelt Energizer on a record player, as a matter of fact, turned it on, it's only going 78 RPMs, and from that day on, the first two years, they argued twice. And then in the last few months, I've heard them argue two or three times, but I think that's because we keep getting more and more of the uh, 5G towers and what have you. And so we need to keep up with that. Um, I haven't heard him argue in the last month. So I think maybe I've added something. And so maybe that's made the difference. Um, so, oh, and my, another neighbor in the other direction, she's got an OCD. And when I would talk to her, she's been a friend of mine for 20 years, longer than that, 20, 20, almost 25 years. She has OCD, really uh, pronounced. And I would talk to her on the, when I would talk to her on the phone, if I interrupted her, she would consider an interruption if I let her know that I was listening. You know how you, when you, someone else is talking, you might go, yep, or oh, or, or you know, simple things like that, you know, wow. This would upset her and throw her off and she would become up, upset and out of balance. Well, when I started that record player, the same thing happened from that day forward that she started allowing me to make those single word 
interruptions, and sometimes I could say a whole sentence and interrupting her, and it didn't bother her. And it has since, in recent times, it has gotten even better, where I can interrupt her with whole sentences. I can do that three or four times, but then I get too, I can become too interrupting, you know, and it bothers her. What, that's because we're all human beings, and, you know, we don't like being interrupted. <laughs> so, so she's doing great. I, you know, I need to fix that uh, personality issue. Um, so I wanted you to know, these are just some examples. Oh, another big example was a gentleman, and I'm going to leave a link to another video with the pictures, the before and after pictures, because I have a hard time putting things on videos. It takes me a long, long time, and I don't want to bother with it. So I'll leave a link to another video where the pictures are shown. You can see the before and after of his foot. He had uh, diabetic wounds, and the antibiotics were not working, and the doctor was prepping him for cutting his foot off. And generally, when they do that, then they cut the leg off, and you know, or the up to the knee, and then they, you know, up to the leg if they live that long, and then they die. And that's the that's the progression for that. So, I set one of these things up, also on a record player. It was an early prototype, and sure enough, his foot healed, top and bottom, and. Uh, the video might only have the bottom, but anyway, uh, his foot healed up. And this is kind of extraordinary because this was a gentleman who continued to smoke cigarettes, which affects circulation, and he, and he was also in the habit of watching violent movies, and he would watch them all day long. And so he was doing that uh, while this record player was, was going, and in six weeks his foot healed. So these are some of the things that come. I had another neighbor, he was staying with his girlfriend here on this, here at this apartment complex, and he was a smoker, and I saw him suddenly double over in pain, chest pain, and I, he, he had told me about it before, and he coughed, you know, and I've seen him react to it, but this time he just like, it was really bad, and he had not had it diagnosed, so I don't know what it was. It could have been really serious because he doubled, like I say, he doubled over. And so I invited him up to my apartment and we got a couple of them running close by to him. And as soon as he, as soon as I brought him to him, he looked at me like, what is that? He didn't say what is that, but you could tell that's what he was asking. He was like, whoa. And I distracted him, and we talked for about 10 minutes, because I figured if I try to tell him about it, that it might block what was going on, right? So we talked for about 10 minutes, and then I asked him, I said, when you first came in here, what was your pain level? And he said it was an eight. Eight. And I said, well, what is it now? And he said, zero. And I said, well, I want you to know that these energizers, these heartfelt energizers are running all the time and they cover the entire area in every direction. So every time you think about it, you'll be activating the peptides that you create in your brain that go to your organs and we, I call them happy peptides. They're, they're very healthy peptides. You, you know, if you have good emotions, whatever, if you think about this thing running and you know it's helping you, that's going to give you a, a good feeling, right? And that will help you to keep recovering. So then he left, and then he, he was no longer living with his girlfriend, got kicked out, whatever, by the, the land, the authority that runs the properties. And he, uh, I, I saw him drive by, I, I saw the truck, and so I came over to him at the stop sign, and I didn't recognize him because he looked so healthy. And I said, how are you doing? And he said, fantastic. And he went, and then he drove off. I guess he was in a hurry. He drove off. <laughs> so these are some of the things that can happen 
uh, when, it, coincidentally we call it, when you are exposed to this kind of energy. And I'm going to share with you a couple ways that you can have it. Uh, so, you know, give you different options. I don't sell this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to give you the link. It's too important that we have this, this going on. Because what's happening is we are exposed to electromagnetic fields. And they come to us from 5G and from 4G and what have you. And they are repeating frequencies. Because, you know, each, each company gets its own bandwidth. And that's the bandwidth that they're sending it out. And I have noticed in the clouds, I was driving down the road here nearby, and it, there was a tree line, so I couldn't see t too far to the left or right. But I saw in the sky were three clouds, these big, puffy, beautiful rain clouds. They call them cumulonimbus clouds. They look like triplets. Now, never in the history of this earth has there ever been triplets of these cumulonimbus clouds. You've never seen two that look alike. They look different. But now with 5G, because it's repeating energy, you see the clouds are a, are a they're made up of two, th two components. The, the basic one is water, right? And the second thing is the net sum of all of the the frequencies that are impacting it from every direction. And that's what gives it, those frequencies give it the water its shape. And that, so because these, these frequencies are coming on a repeated basis, creates repeated clouds. So our bodies are up to 70% water. In the history of mankind, our water inside of us has been irregular in its condition. You know, it's like snowflakes inside our body. No two are alike. Well, with this, the 5G coming in and the 4G, and particularly our smart meters, because they have AC and DC and they are pulsing every few seconds, they're very, very hazardous. They are impacting our water. It's like boom, 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 boom. And they, the water in our body. And so how does that affect us? Well, I will show you. I'll give you an example. All right. On the cover of this book, up there at the top in the center, where are we here? There. You see that thing that looks kind of like a snake coiled around? That, or maybe I'll point to this one here, same thing. Those are what are called microtubules in the nucleus of your cells. And they are coiled. And they have fingers running across them, back and forth. So they're like a flute. And they generate our give structure to our DNA. So they're coiled and they operate on voltage. So again, electrical. And, and the fingers are running across like a flute. So imagine if you were playing the flute in Carnegie Hall and the sold out house because you're really a master and the people are sitting up there, even in the rafters, and they got a tear coming down their eyes because of, how, of the notes that you're hitting, the beautiful notes that shift from one to another, not repetitively necessarily, but you know, a mixture of notes. But then while you were playing that flute, I walked up to you and started tapping on your flute. I, you know, and, and, and sooner or later, you're going to hit the wrong note, right? All the people who are crying are suddenly going to go, <gasps> you know, because you're going to hit a really wrong note. <laughs> well, that's what happens with the microtubules. 
you keep hitting wrong notes, your DNA is going to become spliced, right? You know, it's going to come apart. Now, our body has the ability to repair that. That's why we don't die immediately. But we don't want to have our our energies focus on having to repair the DNA all the time. Yeah, you know, we want a low level of, of repair needed to our DNA. But with 5G and, the, and our smart, I call them smart beaters, you, you're getting too many of them are being torn apart. Oh, and when, you know, if someone is playing, you know, like a telephone ringing over and over again, or, or a, uh, an alarm clock ringing over and over again, even the turn signal going over and over again, you might even turn it off. What does it do? It gets on your nerves. Nerves, electrical. It gets on your nerves. And it can make a person, when something gets on your nerves, is it easier or, or harder to feel irritated? Well, for most people, it's easier. So we have all this stuff coming at us that we can't even see. And our sweat glands have helical antennas in them, the design, to pick up the resonance. It's not the, it's not the heat so much, it's the resonant frequencies. And what that means is, is if you have two tuning forks, and they're both uh, C, you got two tuning forks, there's a C and a C, and you strike the one, you can have this one even further far away, and the second one, because they're both C, they'll, they'll both start to vibrate. All right? So, um, so that, that's resonance. And so, if something resonates and it's fractal, it's friendly, it's going to do, do you good. The stuff that isn't resonating will just pass on through. But if you have a note that would otherwise be good, and it keeps going boom, 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 boom. I don't know, is it thousands of times a second, a, a million times a second with the, you know, with the uh, frequencies? I'm, I really don't know what the number is on it, but it doesn't matter. It, it's it's going to drive you nuts. And so let me ask you, have you noticed in the people that you deal with that people have shorter tempers? They're more likely to become irritated. Do you see that in your family? People seeming to be, you know, five years ago, maybe they weren't so irritated, but now they are. And if you remember 50 years ago, if you've lived that long, the level of irritation has been, you know, people, they say on TV and on the internet that people are at each other's throats. Maybe this is why. That's apparently why my neighbors were arguing all the time. And then they stopped. Almost totally stopped. I guess it's okay every once in a while, once a year, to argue, you know, <laughs> and get, raise your voice. Uh, so, uh, let me look at my notes here, if you don't mind. Um, oh, the other thing is, I've had a short circuit, in, really, in my brain uh, recently. I have a lot of neck issues that bothers me a lot more than my lower back. Uh, I've al always had trouble with my neck, and it recently it's gotten really horrible. And uh, it seems to come from my lower back, because when the lower back is out, the upper back is, you know, it, it, it tries to balance, you know, because it's kind of a, a modified S shape, and it's trying to compensate. Well, in the last week, uh, well, just for like today, I'm taking a shower, and I can't remember how to do, remember the steps that I follow in the shower every time. You know, if you've taken a thousand showers, or, or, or more than that, I mean, you take, you know. If you remember what to do. I, I, it's like five or six times I forgot what I was doing. I forgot to get the soap and wash myself. <laughs> so it's really important that I put this together, and I, I hope you'll forgive me if I, if I get a brain freeze because that's just something I'm dealing with uh, right now. And so I, it's important that I make this video before it becomes, you know, if it ever were to become even 
you know, maybe somebody smacked me upside the head because I needed it. And, uh, you know, but then, but then I got more, even more absent-minded than, than I've always been. So, why am I holding this car up? It's got my notes on it. You, can you see my notes? <laughs> so, all right, so we got, got through that. Oh, and by the way, uh, there's more information here. This is a book I wrote. It's called, Is There a Question That Heals Instantly? Is There a Question That Heals Instantly? And there's four real short chapters that has different aspects about this kind of energy. I talk a lot about organite, which is based on the same concept of, of copper, copper and, and, and crystals. Crystals provide the spark. Copper is a conductor. And then you have your, your insulator. And those three things together make beautiful, beautiful energy. Now, stationary organite, most people go, ah. Because it's so subtle that you really have to tune into it, and it's very limited in this area. Maybe it'll be a foot, two feet, maybe the whole room, if you're lucky. But by spinning things, it changes things. And that's what, see, Nikola Tesla invented the hydroelectric power plants. And he took rivers that were non-electrical, and he made them into electricity that could, that could turn on the lights several hundred miles away because and why because the copper in the turbines spinning like the, the Hoover Dam has 17 turbines and they're spinning it only takes 17 to provide electricity for something like 1.4 million customers and that includes commercial customers you know your whole household of people the street lights everything you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So it's that spinning motion uh, that does it. And and so anyway, I, I got off the subject here. So you can read about that in my book. The whole book is, the paperback is 64 pa 62, 64 pages, something like that. It's really easy. It, it also talks about the question, of course. And then I just wanted to add that other stuff in there because I want, I figured that, the book would be successful and more people would find out about this and that would be a great a great uh, thing because then they would start to participate. We, I call the people who do this, <coughs> excuse me, the ha a handful of heroes because we are making good things happen all over the place. Um, I should mention here that uh, back in 2017, some scientists wrote a paper and they got 250 experts in the fields of, of uh, electromagnetic fields and biology. Uh, and they signed a paper saying that, that things like uh, that 5G would cause flu-like symptoms. All right? And sure enough, say around 2015, whatever, the flu in, the, in the, say 2010 to 2020, was gradually, you know, going up and up and up. You know, some years better, some years worse, going up and up and up. Because, you know, there were already cell top 4G and 3G and all that, and the smart meters and all that running. And then, then we had that thing, you know, that came around in 2020, right? And, and all of a sudden, in the, the flu disappeared. And people thought that it was because they were the flu cases were being counted were being counted for the other thing. However, the flu cases were weekly re, reported weekly, whereas this other thing was reported daily. So when you actually do the computations, even if they had done that, if they had added the flu to the other thing, it would have only added about this much to the total numbers, it would, have, would not have been significant. And they would have risked getting caught. And they, and they would, you know, collect the flu numbers weekly and report on them. And in addition, I believe that, and I think maybe you will agree with me, that the people who've been running this show, the, 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 as we see it more and more, we didn't catch it right away, a lot of us, but 
uh, it uh, we're, we're we're wising up, right? A lot of us are, and um, they would have preferred to have the flu and the other thing going on because that would have been going to the doctor for the for flu shots and going to the doctor for the other thing and then all the treatments that were involved right plus it would it would double the fear at least it might have multiplied it beyond might have squared the the fear you know people oh oh covid oh oh, oh, oh shoot uh you know this that yeah oh flu oh no it's the other thing no oh, 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 oh. so so they wanted to have high numbers of the flu and they're still pushing the flu shot but what happened is is that in the spring early spring of 2020 a lady she purchased 10 of these heartfelt energizers and she she got them running within a week's time and the flu just disappeared not only in the united states but all over the world the reason that the other numbers didn't go down is they were using a bogus test it was not capable of identifying whether somebody had that thing or not what it measured was fragments of the dna of the virus now the viruses and viral infections are as different as bullets and bullet wounds you could have a hundred bullets in your pocket and not it without one bullet wound if you had one bullet wound you would know it right so they were measuring for the wrong thing we have 380 trillion viruses in our body and it's, did i say trillion it's trillion we have 380 trillion viruses in our body at least the men do i don't know about women you know being smaller is probably less and they don't we don't catch the flu every fraction of a second right so our, there must be some mechanism and it's not the immune system because there aren't enough immune cells in our body to keep up with it it's like calling the police if your house gets robbed they're going to be there in 10 minutes you know well the flu virus you know you can't with that many you you know it, it's too late because you know when the flu comes on it comes on suddenly right boom yeah so the, the viruses have something in them. All viruses have this. They have negative needles, negatively charged needles on the outside. And our cell membranes have a negative net charge. So if the cell is healthy, it repels the virus. And generally our cells are healthy. Based on the results, you do not get the flu even if you get the flu once a year, most of the time you you know you didn't get it, right? And you would be getting it every fraction of a second. So our body has that natural ability. However, 5G, 4G, 3G, you know the Wi-Fi, the smart meters, smart beaters, they affect electro electrically the process of making your cell membranes have a negative net charge basically what it is if you're interested you don't have to know this we have we have uh, what are called uh, cell channels in our body and they allow electrolytes to pass through so you got your sodium your your calcium, your potassium, and your magnesium. Well, and they're electrically charged. And the magnesium needs to come through to attach to help create ATP. ATP is our energy, almost all of our energy. And without the, without the magnesium, it doesn't get made. And, oh, and let me say this, Increasing your magnesium intake only makes matters worse because the more magnesium gets repelled to the wrong place. And so the, the solution is not to increase your magnesium 
or any of the others. What you need to do is have the proper process working, right? So, I mean, it's like, it's like if you got a bucket, you know, and you're trying to fill it up, and it's got holes in it, and you, if you know, increasing the pressure of the water going in will not improve the bucket's ability to carry water by much, because it'll be sprouting out farther and farther. Same thing with the magnesium. So, the, with the magnesium, it's the electrical aspect. <clears throat> so we need to protect ourselves from these frequencies that are coming that are repetitive. Um, so, and that's what this is all about. So, um, let me take a look here. I think I covered everything leading up to it, so now I want to show you how you can make this work for yourself. And the first thing we're going to do, if you have ceiling fans, this is uh, beautiful. You, you take copper wire. You know, you ha if you have a strand of copper wire like this, and it has not been twisted like this one has, the energy flows only in one direction. The electrons, all right, the charge. However, if you stick it, if you bend the wire in half, as has been done here, then you take the looped end and you stick it in here, tighten it down, and then you hold the other end with a pair of pliers. You turn this on slowly, and it will start to wind. And you keep it going slowly until it starts to buckle. All right, and you'll end up with a straight wire. This straighter than this one. I've been fooling around with this wire, and so it's a little bit bent. But you'll have a pretty, a really nice, attractive wire. Now, why is that important? Because, and this is very small. Let me see if I can hold this up here. If you can see it. You see it's twisted. Now, the wire is going in two different directions, and it's in contact with each other everywhere. That agitates the electrons, and the electrons produce fract what are called, they call them fractal frequencies, they're friendly frequencies. Fractal just means that they are different sizes of regular shape, like music, or like what you get from the sun. Those are irregularly shaped frequencies that are coming to us. Now, you take this, you measure your, you measure your, your ceiling fan blades, Right, and then you get, and you measure your copper wire, and you want it to be double the length of this of the ceiling fan, right? Because you're, you're going to bend it in half, and then you're going to twist it like this. You know, you do. I'm going to turn it on, not hold on to it. Let's see. See that will that will make it go and twist because you're holding it with the pliers. You're holding with the pliers on this end here. All right? So that's going to shorten it up a little bit, and you can trim it so they're all the same length. Right? And then you're going to get a clear packing tape and tape this on the top part of your ceiling fan. Because we're using the principle that Tesla came up with to generate uh, electricity. You're not generating electricity, you're generating frequencies. Because you don't have any spinning magnets going on here. Alright. So, you're generating the frequencies and, that are coming off of here as they go around. And my understanding is a ceiling fan goes a little bit under 200 revolutions a minute. So that's pretty good. And I have, and people have written to me in the comments on YouTube, uh, a few times at least, maybe several times, that they sleep s so much better and they um, have more energy the next day. And when that happens, you're going to find that when people have more energy, they feel better, less irritation, it, people are just going to get along fine. And in some cases, that might mean drinking less alcohol. 
because you, you just don't think about it, you know. And so, and, but uh, people getting less angry, that means it could be less domestic abuse, less arguing, yelling at the kids or the, or the spouse, that sort of thing. So we're, we're making the world a better place. And that's a beautiful thing. So that's how you do it on a ceiling fan. Now maybe you don't have a ceiling fan, or maybe you want it to be even stronger. I hope you want it to be even stronger. And I would suggest you do this, if you have ceiling fans to do this, and do the other thing. Let me set this down. And I want to show you the Heartfelt Energizer discs just so you get a visual of what it looks like. You can see this here. This, this one happens to be eight inches on the website that you would go to to get this, Applicum, A-P-L-I-C-U-M, Applicum.com. He has them there. You go to the, the main website and then you go to you scroll down just a little bit there's a picture of a man with a beard at least there is today when I make this video <laughs> and you'll see M the letters M W O Lakovsky but just M W O is enough click on that and you'll see three examples of discs with holes uh, the 100 the 200 and the 300 now the 300 is only 50% larger than this. However, the area that, you know, in diameter, but the area is much bigger. And if something is spinning, the outside part has to go faster than the inside part. As a result, although it's 50%, only 50% bigger, and uh, about 25% more in cost, or maybe 30%, something like that, more in cost. Uh, it's uh, four times as strong. Four times as strong. I need to look up the camera. <laughs> so, if you know, if your budget allows for it, and I think with the present uh, rate of exchange, it's about $75 for the bigger one, and and this would be about $55 for the smaller one, maybe a little less for both, plus shipping. So um, that's, again, what it looks like. This, this middle design is, is the Lakovsky uh, multi-wave oscillator design. And this is a, another design that, uh, that another gentleman came up with. It. He was a child prodigy. He got hired in high out of high school by the U.S. government due to a science project. His name is Flan Patrick Flanagan. So now I'm going to bring up, bring this up to you, the, 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 the 300 meter, so that you can have a fuller experience. It has on it extra little gigaws that I've stuck on there to make it a little bit stronger. But you won't see that uh, on, on the applicant website. It's going to look like this. Um, so, but what we want to do first, here, let me bring it up for you. It's not a standing fan, so it's a little bit awkward. It has to be a standing fan so that it will fit. And let me get this centered. I make the mistake of looking at the screen at, to tell me how to put it on there. Let me pull it back a little bit. Okay, so there it is. Um, and I, I uh, have, will have this on, <coughs> it will not be on oscillate. Oscillation is better from my experience and from others' experiences. You, you will feel a greater energy when it's oscillating. I guess because the frequencies are more fractal, and that is they're more differentiated from each other um, than when they are when it's going straight ahead. But this is still powerful as it is. And what I'd like you to do <clears throat> before we start is uh, we're going to do a little breathing exercise, just a couple breaths. And what I would ask you to do is to breathe through your nose and take and for a count of five and then see if you can let it out through your nose 
for maybe a count of five, and, and it's fine however you do it. Uh, and do that twice, uh, because that will help you to relax, and then I want you to be focused. So after you do that, I want you to assess your state of being, you know, your emotions, your, your stress levels, whatever. And then when I turn it on, I want you to observe what happens to them. And you might find that within the first second or two that you feel a shift. And for some others, it might take a little longer. Some of you might not feel anything at all. That's fine. But I just want you to have this opportunity to experience this. And again, I make no money when you purchase these, these uh, heart, I call them heartfelt energizers, the multi-wave oscillators. So it's real simple. Let me uh, tell you this, people are always asking. I have a little pyramid, it's an organite pyramid that's optional, very optional. But So forget about that. Uh, here's the, the white knob that goes up, that holds everything together. So this is a Lasco standing fan. And what you do is that you put the fan together and at the last step after you've got the blades on there, you put the disc on there, it's got the hole in it, remember? It's gonna go over the spindle, right there in the center. And then you're gonna tighten this down. Oh, when you put it on, all right, the hole is a little bit larger than the spindle. So as you tighten it, uh, do you, the best you can to, because of the space, so there's not all on one side, you wanna center it as best you can. It'll, it'll run fine either way. But if you find that the fan is, you know, making a little noise, or, you know, slight noise or, or slightly wanting to move around, or whatever, then readjust it and see if that doesn't make the difference. You can cut the blades off if you want. They are not necessary. You leave the center portion there. Um, so that's up to you. You know, like if you're in a, a northern climb, you may not want that fan blowing on you nine months of the year, you know? Oh, what am I doing? I was going to do this demo. Okay, so, oh, my arm is getting tired. Man. Even though I got all those muscles, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> so let's see. Well, how do I want to turn this? I want to turn it this way as best I can. And so let's go ahead and take that first breath through your nose for... Just a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Now let it out slowly. One, two, three, four, five. And now go ahead and take another breath through your nose when you're ready. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now go ahead and assess your state of being and how you're doing mentally, emotionally, physically, and then we'll, we'll just observe that. So I'm going to turn this on now. I hope it's not on oscillate.
All right, I'm now going to do a little bit of oscillation just so to see if that, see if you notice uh, an even greater effect. It's harder to hold on to. All right, that's a couple of minutes there, I believe. Um, so let me turn this off. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Some of you, you might be feeling quite a bit of difference, you know, that fast. It's because your body is getting the, getting the resonant frequencies that it needs. And how many? Uh, well, this thing, not counting these little doodads on here, you've got almost a thousand points. And these, the energy can jump from any point to any one of the other thousand points. You know, so if they are all doing that simultaneously, the second one would have, instead of a thousand points to jump to, it would have 999. And the next one would have 998 possible points because the other two are already occupied for that moment. So this is going on, I don't know how many times. It, it, it could be trillions of times a second, I, I don't know. But these sparks are jumping. And when they do that, that combination is a different frequency, each each one. So it's, you know, a thousand times 999 would be what? 999,990? I'm not sure. It's, it's a big number, right? So, and then you multiply it again by 998, and then you're in the billions, or close to it, and then you're in the you know, it just gets bigger and bigger. So it's a number that's too impossible to fathom, and that's the way the sun is. It's impossible to fathom how many different frequencies we get. Because, we, you know, one second we might need frequency number one, and the next second we might need frequency number two for a particular thing. You know, these, these uh, microtubules, that are in our cells, in the nucleus, they move around, as you can see, like this, this is showing steps here, 
they're at this step and that step. They're moving all around. So the angles change. So the, the frequency that it receives is changed. Then the note is changed. It's all being changed. <laughs> you see, that's what we need. So it's not a matter of getting one particular frequency necessarily. Although, you know, short term that can be beneficial to help help us. But long term, we want them all. Because we that way our body will get what it needs when it needs it. And I should mention to you as well that um, there's something in, in us called uh, saturation points. There are beneficial saturation points. So, for example, I've learned this about vitamin C, that you want to get a certain about 2,000 milligrams of lipidic C in order for it to open up the cell walls and get inside. See, without that, it doesn't doesn't necessarily happen um, inside the cell. So it's like the best way to describe it is like a light switch. You know, if you go to turn your lights on and you took the the switch and moved it up say 98%, 99% of the way, you might not get any light or you might get a flickering of the lights, right? So the same thing with us. If we are getting 98 or 99% of what we need, it's not happening very often for that particular place in your body. So, you know, fortunately the other one might be getting it, but that one isn't. So you feel a little bit, you know, you, it's not like you drop dead necessarily, but you get enough of those going on where it's at 99, 98, 97, then you will drop dead. You know, we'll, we'll all drop dead. So uh, we want to get it up to 100%. So when you add whatever you decide to do with your ceiling fans, the copper wire, or with the Hartfeld Energizer multi-wave oscillator, um, you are adding to the total, total sum total of the free, of the of the beautiful frequencies, the friendly frequencies that the world needs. So, if there were a hundred of them running now, and you added 101, <laughs> it could double the effect of the of all 101. Right. So another way of looking at it is, what if one person out of 100 in the world, there's eight, what is it, 8 billion people approximately, give or take, and one out of 100, each 100, was at 99%, right? You turn this on, this energy has no limits. It goes through mountains, walls, and windows. You can have this in any room of your house. It's going to affect the whole house. And it's going to go through the walls. So and this energy just keeps going and going and going. And so when a repeating wave from a cell tower or cell mass runs into a, a uh, friendly frequency, a fractal frequency, both of them get converted into fractal frequencies. So now you've you had one, and you created another, right? Or, yeah, this one. This was fractal, and now they're both fractal. And it goes on to bless someone else, or yourself, or your, your baby, or your husband, your, your parents, whatever, your children. So each one that gets added, it doesn't take a lot. That's why a handful of heroes can turn this earth into a, a million gardens of Eden. We had a garden of Eden at one time. We, you know, I believe that. Some people don't, but if we had one, we can have them again. And this actually affects the plants to grow very, very well. So there wouldn't be a food shortage, there would be an abundance of food. 
And uh, oh, a couple more things I didn't tell you. Maybe if I remember both of them, um, I'm forgetting them already. I used to weigh well over 300 pounds. I told, I mentioned that, and I have shed this weight since coming up with these inventions, these innovations. And I didn't exercise, and I didn't try to diet. I just happened to be that I wasn't hungry. And it, well, the beautiful thing about it, it's a very simple process. Any biochemist can tell you this, that the negative oxygen ions with these things generate as well, um, turn our fat into water and carbon dioxide. Or that's a component of air and gives us energy. So that's what happened is that I felt energy, the fat was being converted, I didn't even think about eating. I would go a couple days at a time without eating. And there was no effort involved. So you can help shed the weight, hopefully this way. And with negative ions, negative ions have a very short distance. So the more of these you have, the more of that you'll be exposed to. And so, knock yourself out, get as many as you can. You could be like the lady in Panama City who had the 10 units and, you know, all at once. You don't have to order just one. You can order 10, you can order two, you can order however many you want. And we could transform this world so, like it's never been before. And you will be playing a major role in that. Now, one last thing, maybe, and that is, um, oh, there's two, two things now. First, let me tell you about this. Uh, the energizers work, and this part you won't have to understand. Uh, I'm going to use some numbers, and a lot of times people blank out when they, when they hear a number. There's a book. I don't know if it's, a, it's outside of camera range. It's up there. It's called Physical Science. It's a textbook. It's taught in the schools. And, and I just so happened, I, I was visiting someone in a nursing home. She was asleep, so I went to the library, and there was some free books there, and there was a, that book was in a big box. And I opened it up to page, I think, 173, and it said that it was talking about gravity, the, the forces that we have. And it said, gravity, we think of gravity as being a strong force, and it sure is because it holds trains to the ground, right? They don't float off into space, right? So it's pretty strong. But there's another force, that's the electron energy, and the book said it was a thousand trillion 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 times stronger. That's 39 zeros. 13 sets of zeros stronger than the electron. In our physical world, everything happens with the, with the, within those two parameters. That is the, you know, the proton keeps the electron from flying off. It's weak, it's because it has mass that it's able to hold it in place. But everything that we do takes place in that area. All right, that's the law of cause and effect. It's the real world. It's the world of the chemists and the physicists and et cetera, right? But there might be another world, right? Because water can't make water. Hydrogen can't make hydrogen. Something has to make all those things so there has to be something, some other thing outside of that. And I call this first place the, the realm of the 10 to the 39th power, the physical realm. Very powerful. But there's another realm that is 10 to the 40th, and 10 to the 41st, and 42nd. Now, Remember I mentioned there were 39 zeros? If you add a zero to the end of the 39, 
it is a number that is way, way, way beyond our ability to comprehend. So we're adding a zero, but we're not adding a zero. We're adding close to what would seem like infinity. It's not, but it seems like it. So the, the question helps a person to go from the physical realm into the area of grace, of gratitude and grace. And the physical realm operates on cause and effect. The area of grace operates outside of that. And so the, the question is real, real simple. It's hardwired in your brain to work. A seven-year-old could do it. And you just ask the question twice. You don't have to ask it over and over and over again. Although you'll probably find yourself asking it different times of the day whenever something bothers you. And that question will, just like this, if you felt the energy coming to you, this thing will, like that, often, sometimes you'll get an answer immediately so that you can drop the negative cycle and go into neutrality. See, when we, when we have something negative happen and we react too negatively, we generally have the evidence to support our negative feelings. So it's very difficult to shift from the negative to the positive. It doesn't feel our integrity won't allow us to do that sometimes, right? So we need a method that is hardwired in our brain to get to neutral. And when we're in a neutral place, we're able to go next to the positive where we feel gratitude, and gratitude is, is part of grace. It brings on grace. And when we have grace, miracles can happen, blessings can happen, and that lifts our energy up. We feel lighter because we've, we've taken a burden off, and that's something to be grateful for and that it, it gives us that we have the energy right we got more energy because we've had something lifted off our shoulders and then we feel grateful and we go back to grace we have energy to be grateful for so it's EGG energy gratitude and grace it's EGG is an egg and it's the kind of egg that you can have an unlimited number of and if we were to stay only with the heartfelt energizers and the, and the ceiling fans, we would end up with a highly, highly intelligent, uh, beautiful people who still have problems. We're still going to have problems because that's the way this earth is designed. But now you'll have the ability to handle those problems and your life will turn into a miracle every day as often as you want it to. So with that, thank you for listening. I, I've gone on for an hour and nine minutes. I didn't realize I was, <laughs> it was that long. But anyway, you take care and God bless. I hope this is helpful. If it is, please share it subscribe because I have other videos and I'll, hopefully I'll live a long time and make more videos that you can watch and you can also if you subscribe YouTube will will suggest more of my videos to you to watch and uh, there's some value I think in all of them I have one I talk about ocean waves and in a way that you've never had it described before and how it applies to you inside and it gives, a, gives you a dramatic something you can wrap your head around about how much power you have. You know, people say you have power to do anything, and, and we just kind of blow it off, right? But when I describe ocean waves to you, and, and, and you start relating it to yourself, 
Wow. <laughs> it's something else. So anyway, I'm not real organized as far as that goes. It's in there somewhere. I, you know, uh, maybe I'll find it. Um, but I'll put a link there. And so I, there'll be a link there for Afflicum.com. I'll put links for my books. Uh, and I'll, if I remember, I'll put the link for the Ocean Wave. I call, by the way, I call beaches the uh, God's Wading Room, W-A-D-I-N-G. Just like you go to the doctor's waiting room. Well, you could, you could also look at it as a doctor's wading room because there is so much healing that's possible from walking on the crystals that are in the sand and the negative ions that come from the water. Rather than going to the doctor, if you feel kind of sick a little bit, and you can, go to the beach and walk around and see if you don't feel better. And if you do feel better, then you don't have to go to the doctor. Even if you have to pay five bucks to get to that beach. You know, if, you, if it doesn't make you feel better, then maybe you can go to the doctor or you can take your two heartfelt energizers and sit between them and see what happens. Right? <laughs> well, you've been great. Well, thank you so much for listening, and uh, you take care, and God bless.